You're looking at the oldest color film on Earth, shot by Edward Turner in 1901. And what better way to show off your world-changing invention than with a parrot? Today, we take for granted the staggering number of colors we see on screen. But it's taken a whole lot of ingenious hacking to get here. Before inventors like Turner figured out how to capture color on film, filmmakers were painting their footage frame by frame. The results were stunning, but as you can imagine, a bit labor intensive. Director George Méliès hired a whole assembly line of women just to paint his films, like the iconic movie A Trip to the Moon. Others utilized tinting to avoid the expense of hand coloring. Some filmmakers figured out how to capture color on multiple strips of film, but found it incredibly difficult to project. KinemaColor solved this problem by using a clever optical illusion. Each frame was shot alternatively with a red or green filter, then projected again through an alternating red and green filter. Our persistence of vision combined the alternating colors. Even though it only used two colors, the resulting image looked remarkably natural. Still, those films had a problem with fringing, those red and green trails, and the lack of blue was very apparent. Meanwhile, Technicolor developed a whole new process to capture natural color. Using a beam splitter with a semi-permeable mirror in the center, Technicolor was able to capture three colors on three separate strips. Those were all pressed onto the same clear strip, leaving behind a full color image on a single piece of film. This gave rise to one of cinema's most powerful moments in 1939, The Wizard of Oz. That moment that Dorothy opens the door to Oz, and the film color shifts from a dusty sepia to a rich and vibrant full-spectrum technicolor, color goes beyond representing the natural world. It becomes a part of the story. That moment ushered in a whole new era of filmmaking. It wasn't until 1951 that Kodak introduced Eastman color which quickly beat out Technicolor mostly because it was easier to use and way cheaper. Unfortunately, it wasn't very good at retaining color, so most films will be reprinted by Technicolor's superior process. Not a whole lot changed for several decades until this hot mess. The live action film, Super Mario Bros. The first full length feature to use digital intermediates. Surprisingly, digital processing survived that disaster and now just about every major motion picture gets its finishing touches done in digital space. A famous example of this is Coen Brothers' O Brother Where Art Thou? One of the first films to leverage digital process to achieve that uniquely dusty, desaturated look. You had been in this world before where you only had the option when film to make things brighter or darker or red or green or blue, and um, that was it. That's Steve Scott the supervising finishing artist at Technicolor. You've probably never heard of him, but you've definitely seen his work. Yes, of course, I had my auspicious debut with the Coneheads movie. <laughs> it's Apollo 13, Interview with the Vampire, Titanic, Iron Man, the Avengers movies, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Birdman, The Revenant, The Gravity. Those last three all won Academy Awards in cinematography. This is him working on a more recent project, Doctor Strange. He wanted to see a little more detail in the blacks. He didn't want it so crunchy there. Steve is able to finesse every little detail, from the shadows on Tilda Swinton's face to the little beads of light falling through the window. He also prepared the film in HDR, or high dynamic range, the latest advancement in image projection, which allows us to see more detail than ever before. Usually, when you see a black screen, you don't really see black. You see kind of a lifted black. Think of it this way. You have a gradient from black to white. Imagine you can only see a portion of that. And HDR allows you to see the full range. This advancement gives filmmakers a wider range of light to work with than ever before. It's the biggest leap in uh, display and projection and monitors I've seen since I've been in this business. The technology is still pretty new and a bit hard to come by, but that's changing. Dolby recently partnered with AMC to outfit dozens of theaters with its Dolby Vision laser projectors. There's generally only one or two films in Dolby Vision at any given theater. 
but you'll be seeing a lot more in the near future.